You are responsible for learning the anatomy of the long bone. So let's take a moment to discuss that now. The long bone has two basic regions. The shaft or central portion is called the diaphysis and it is composed mainly of compact bone. Let's take a closer look at this diaphysis. Covering the outer surface of the diaphysis and attached to the underlying compact bone is a layer of connective tissue called the periosteum. If we look at the interior of the diaphysis, notice that it is hollow. There is a medullary cavity as it is referred to, and that medullary cavity is lined with a layer of tissue called an endosteum. And in an adult, that medullary cavity would be filled with yellow marrow, and yellow marrow is mainly fat. I don't know if you have ever cooked soup, but the way you make broth is you take a soup bone and you boil it in water. And what happens is you liquefy this fat and that is the, uh, in essence, is the broth. It's what gives your soup flavor. Now in an infant or a small child, this yellow marrow would instead be red bone marrow where red blood cells and white blood cells would be actively uh, formed. As a child ages, most of the red bone marrow in the long bones are replaced with yellow marrow. But if this were an infant, certainly this yellow marrow would be all red bone marrow. The ends of the bone are regions which we call the epiphyses. The epiphyses are composed mainly of spongy bones. So notice at the diaphysis we had mainly compact bones surrounding the medullary cavity. In the epiphyses we have still have that outer layer of compact bone, but we have much more spongy bone pretty much filling the interior. Spongy bone is more compressible and more appropriate for uh, the end of the bone where this bone is going to form a joint with another bone. On the outer surface of the epiphyses, you have this outer layer of what's called articular cartilage. I have it labeled here. It's shown in blue, but notice there's also articular cartilage at the distal epiphyses. This articular cartilage is hyaline cartilage. Its function is to provide a low friction surface at a joint. This helps protect the deeper bone tissue. Sort of like if, I don't know if you're familiar with how brake pads work, but so you don't have metal grinding on metal, you have this pad typically made of asbestos that provides low friction surface so it protects your, uh, the components of your brakes from grinding one another. And that's basically what this articular cartilage does. Now as we get older, this articular cartilage becomes more brittle and it will sometimes break down and come off and that will uh, expose the bone to friction and damage and there's uh, uh, inflammation and pain associated with your articulations or what is known as arthritis. If you've ever seen a chicken or turkey leg before, no doubt you've seen articular cartilage. Right, there it is right there at the end of those roasted 
chicken legs. Now let's look at the anatomy of a long bone on an actual human bone. This is a frontal section of the femur. Here we have the diaphysis, that's the region of the bone that makes up the shaft or central portion. Compact bone is the layer of bone tissue that's on the outer portion of and makes up most of the diaphysis. The medullary cavity is the hollow cavity inside the diaphysis. At each end, we have the epiphyses, the, both the proximal and distal epiphyses, and it is composed mainly of compact bone.